Hello and welcome everybody to the Venus Expressions meeting of uh, 19th July. Today we are talking about important subjects and uh, we're reading the notes of the agenda about submissions. After that, Benjamin will talk to you about another matter which is uh, very relevant to the work at this time. So thank you for your assistance and thank you for your participation on this team, which is a very important activist function and service to this world. So let's begin. Hey, uh, I was wondering, do we need to introduce each other uh, one after the other? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I thought we could work down the list, uh, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, um, uh, my name is Ray. Uh, a lot of people seem to know me by G-Man, which is the name that I used to use when I first came in into the community. Uh, I'm the global coordinator for the Linguistic Team International, and I'm here to offer everyone a, uh, a project that would actually link the two teams together. Uh, glad to be here. Good to see everybody. Hi, I'm Ben. I live at the moment in London. I work for a visual effects company. Um, at the moment, I am a uh, um, creative heritage film coordinator. And um, that's pretty much it. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicholas. I work with the linguistic team and also I'm very interested in supporting this group uh, and every work that the artists uh, will contribute to the Venus project. Afternoon here in Mexico. Hey, we didn't hear much. I think your mic volume is very low. Oh, okay. Then, uh, then I'll uh, have to that, fix it. That's, no, that's better. That's better. It's working now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I seem to have this problem with the mic. I haven't actually configured it well. Huh, I was moved to this channel. <laughs> Hello, um, what can I do? I'm just here as a listener. My name is Julio Mendoza from Mexico, 26 years old. I'm a, I am an industrial engineer. Okay, I don't think the rest on the list actually can talk. They don't have a mic. Um, so either just write down something or we, uh, and we can carry on with the agenda. I suppose we'll start with the agenda. Um, do you, Nicola, do you want to start off with the agenda? Sure. Well, I, I could just quickly read uh, through the, the first uh, section, if you, if you don't mind. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Quality Assurance Team Overview. All submissions must be submitted to the Quality Assurance Team at Expressions the Venus Project dot com or at tvconcepts.com. If you don't know, if you do not receive automated reply within twenty four hours after your email, that your submission was submitted and under review in May. Okay, um Uh, just one second. Let let Joe try his mic. See if it's working yet. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey we can hear you. Not very well, but. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me now? Is this better? You kind of yeah. sound like you're on a cell phone in a tunnel um, deep underground, <laughs> but it, but we can hear you. How's this? Is this any better? How's this now? Loud and clear. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Hey, you want to introduce yourself? Certainly. 
Hello, everybody. My name is Joe Park. I am one of the coordinators from the media contacts team, and I'm here to help out in any which way I can. It's great to see you all online, and I hope to get something done today. Thank you. Okay, um, Robert, just join in. Do you want to introduce yourself, Robert? Okay, maybe not, so never mind. Um, so, so yeah, is it, uh, does actually everyone have um, the agenda and know um, what, um, what it's all about? Okay, I'll just give an, an, an overview of what we're talking about today. So, uh, we start just um, to explain basically the, all the teams in uh, Venus Expression Media. So, um, first we were talking about the quality assurance team, how to submit media, music, music submissions, uh, video submissions, visual art submissions, literature submissions, and then talk about the quality assurance team. Uh, media Context Approval Administration, um, about uh, the VTunes coordinator, um, VTunes in general, uh, the sites. Oh, yeah, and that we actually need um, a coordinator for collage, I think, uh, and uh, talk about current products. Um, cool. Um, yes, yeah, so does anyone have any question on what we started to talk about? No, I was listening. Actually, sorry, I, I just got here. I apologize, but I've been listening. Go, go ahead. Okay, so we can carry on with video submissions. Um, Nick Chins and uh, uh, yeah, John, carry on. So video submissions. Ready, ready, ready. Created Heritage Films Promo Abbreviation for Created Heritage Films must be in brackets then be a type see below for details about this Media submissions must be submitted privately through the mail password protected Lionly in WMB NPEG form or FOB or to YouTube and listen. Creative Heritage Films Questions. Submit any questions, concerns, etc. you may have for any other Creative Heritage Films coordinators about video project. Okay, thank, thanks. Uh, any, any questions on that? Okay, let's carry on. Okay. Visual art submissions. Minus college image type. Image types as following for graphic design to be or to be rendered. Drawing, painting, flyer, poster, DVD, cover or CD cover design. Minus college questions. Literature submissions. Document type. Document types. Blog, short story, poem, report, autobiography, essay, play, signature, and two guidelines below. Questions. Any questions? Okay, um, yeah, so next quality assurance team, um, media, reviews, um, sorry. Yeah. Okay, media context approval administration, reviews media that has lengthy or detailed content that presents or represents the Venus Project proposal, solutions uh, to ideas in detail are reviewed by senior coordinators such as Roxon Meadows, Joel Holt, and Roxon, Venus Expression Coordinators, which uh, um, Venus, um, basically art, we all know that he is one of 
uh, Venus Expression Coordinator. Um, so yeah, actually, uh, we don't. Do we have any other uh, coordinators to here tonight? I mean, for the V uh, Venus Expression Media um, coordinator, like me, Ash, and Alfred. Well, sure. I have a quick question, though. Sorry, that was too much echo. I didn't actually understand. Yeah, yeah too, much too much echo. Okay, if I was to organize a lecture at the University of Florida or something like that, um, you know, around a resource-based economy, you know, really what the Venus Project is pushing for, is this something that I'd have to actually get approved? You know, I'd have to send for approval of everything that I talk about, everything I cover? Is, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm not actually sure because I, I don't deal with that. Uh, I suppose there is a team for lectures, so if you get in touch with them, unless someone else knows about it. But also, you know, with media, you know, if I were to make a film or, you know, write a book or something like that, you know, or create pamphlets, things like that, it, all this needs to be approved first. Is that correct? Well, if you are really stating that. Uh, in your book, uh, that it, it, it is about the Venus project, then, um, yeah, like a video, is you have to make sure that the information is accurate um, if you want to represent uh, the Venus project. If you're not representing the Venus project uh, as such, just talking about the Venus project, then uh, I don't think you would have to get an approval in such as such. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. I didn't mean to interrupt or anything. Go, go ahead. Uh, no, that's fine. I'm just um, just trying to rethink what we're going to talk about next. So, because um, I mean, I can start talking about uh, creative heritage films. Um, Ash isn't here to the coordinator of V Tunes, so um, uh, I thought he would be. So he can't actually talk about it. And um, and there are the uh, we are missing some uh, like. Um, Actually, that may be a good time to ask, is there anyone that would be happy to uh, be a coordinator for uh, uh, Venus Collage, uh, Alfred, coordinators for uh, the Expression Media's team? I would love to help as a um, co-coordinator, but I have to, to review my my time uh, this week because some changes on the responsibilities um, I have assumed uh, lately and related to this project. Um, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll send you a message this week. Cool, that's great. Um, anyone else? So, yeah, Alfred, we haven't got any other positions that needs filling? Ah, that's the one I was thinking of. Anyone interested in that? I actually don't really know much about this position, so I wouldn't we know what to say about it. Okay, and we have also Venus Collage Coordinator Maya in love, um, and she's not here tonight, so um, we'll have to contact her. Or if anyone is interested in that, obviously uh, contact her directly. Uh, I assume. And uh, is there is there uh, details out there on the website, uh, Alfred? If, um, if you guys are thinking about it and later actually would like to be coordinator of Venus Illustrator coordinator, coordinator uh, just um, uh, contact Alfred and he'll arrange that for you. I could do that actually. Yeah, well, sounds good to me. Um, and y you can also have uh, co coordinators, people to help you with stuff. So, um, hang on. Yeah, um, so people in quality assurance team are needed. So 
same drill. If you're interested, you can always contact Alfred later. Okay, so just uh, talking about how to sign up. Under Cyber Studio, click Book Studio, fill out information and agree terms. Please fill out the Venice Social Media roster before you sign up. If you haven't already, in order your account to be approved. Um, site use, main communication, information display, and workstation and quarters for the Venice Expression Media. Please browse through the site. It, it will be approved and updated on a regular basis. So yeah, um, just have, come back often on the, on the website because uh, we always got uh, we do have forums um, uh, going on, and so we can always <coughs> talk about it. Uh, like projects, for example, which I'm going to uh, later talk about. Um, what do you know? Web developers are needed for the Venice Expression Media site. Apparently, anyone interested in that? Must be exchanged with Joomla. Joomla. Okay, so um, Fran, you wanted to participate um, any in any um, any field in particular? Okay, um, well, I don't know, okay, I'm sure you can help out on something else, um, um, yeah, have a look at the website and see what you uh, actually think you could help out with, uh, if there's nothing in Venus Expression Media uh, website, on, uh, then maybe in the activist team or Venus Project team, like translator or the uh, any other teams that they have. Cool. Well, I'm sure they'll need your help. Right, oh, I'll actually just finish uh, with the agenda. Um, volunteer to coordinate a sub team or join the quality assurance team, which is a very important team that reviews, improves quality, and approves of new media for the Venice project. For more info, you've got a link um, here. I'll just post it just in case not everyone's got uh, the agenda. Right, before I start uh, with the current media projects, uh, anyone got any questions with what's been said or the organization? Everyone uh, understand where to look into, where and where to find information and, so, and that? Take that as a yes, okay. Um, right, so first, Project uh, Venus Project blog for writers, editors, graphic designers, etc. Venus Illustrate the Venus Illustrator team will be taking charge of updating and writing new articles for the Venus Project blog. We need writers, editors, and graphic designers to help write, publish, and design articles for the blog. So actually, uh, Fran, you might be interested in that. There's some connections uh, through the art institute, uh, students who could probably do something like that. Graphic design students, film students, animation students. Uh, yeah, um, students is not a bad idea. I'm, I'm sure um, a lot of students would be interested. Um, but uh, it, it can't just be uh, any students. I mean, if you know some, some students and you want actually to get, uh, they're interested to get involved, then uh, they, you can meet a medium and tell them where to go and actually join the site because it would actually be better to, for them to be part of the team if they want to be part of the projects. Well, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I would certainly do that too. The best thing is they would do it for free and for a great... 
Yeah, anyway, it's always a good experience for students, um, I reckon, and I'm sure they have, do have a lot of free time anyway. Cool, well, uh, yeah, Fran, um, just um, just uh, have a, well, we're talking about all the projects, so you can always, uh, you, you can join several teams and you can, like everyone uh, can actually join several teams and be uh, involved as much as they want, uh, depending on how much time they've got anyway, so it's all up to you what you really feel like you would be interested in anyway, it's really important that you're interested in the project, you'd probably be better than if you weren't anyway. Uh, right, Teams logo projects for graphic designers. This project is for creating Teams logo graphic designers can contact team coordinators of how they like their logos to be designed and text. They would like to add it on the blog. Uh, yeah, so these teams, are, um, if I'm right, I think that yeah, they're the the Venus Collage team, the VTunes team, the Creative Heritage Film, the Venus Illustrator. Uh, yeah, so I think that's a little project that some people, yeah, um, if they're interested in, they can just help with that. I should have a great idea for a logo for the Venus project itself. Uh, for for actually the Venus project, the whole, the whole of the Venus project. The Venus project. Yeah, the whole of it. Uh, just a nice logo for you know saying hey you know someone would recognize it and be like wow that person must belong to the Venus. So. Uh, um, yeah, that's the thing. We actually have a logo. I don't know if you know which one we're talking about. No, actually, I, I don't. Actually, uh, okay. Um, it's um, it's right next to the um, uh, the activist Venus Project activist uh, on the website next to the name on the banner. If you see the one, I mean. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see with like the V and the. B and the I. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just posting that, that one. But actually, um, I don't think you, I mean, I've actually done a little bit of a logo animation, but I, I only use that logo because uh, I thought they could be used in, in some videos. But uh, you can always like because this is just the V. You can always um, uh, have some animation or just the whole of um, the Venus project uh, words. Um, you can make it look cool, but this is the official one. You can even though you can always use um, a different one if you'd like to. My idea was a little simple. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear you? Yeah, yeah can you hear you? Sorry, yeah. A little simpler, but it's got to do with the, the circular city itself. Anyway, forget about it. No, that's fine. I mean, if you you can um, if you're um, if you like if you if you got a design and uh, it's really interesting design, uh, I mean. Uh, I'm sure it could be used somehow, um, like some videos or some poster or whatever. It's just we'll we'll use them. I mean, I don't know if they actually would like a new logo of the Venus, so they they're happy for us to improve it. I'm not actually in touch with them, but yeah. Um, for now, this is the one. Uh, yeah, if you if you can actually um, come up with something really good, and they would actually like it, so I'm sure they'll still be open to. To uh, you know, opinions and um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, sorry. Yes, uh, like uh, Alfred was saying, we need um, logos not just for the teams in Venice Expression Media. 
but also the ones in the TVP activism and the Venus project, um, which like um, they are like the engineers or the f fundraising or a tr translation team, all these teams. So, um, who is actually? Um, so yeah, if you, I, I don't know, um, which team is that? Is that actually allocated to this project, uh, our friend? Is it Venus Illustrator? Yeah. Yeah, so actually, um, um, yeah, so uh, Robert, you wanted to be Vinicius Illustrator coordinator, so um, if you want, if you want to take care of that um, project to start with, or even if you come up with other projects, then uh, we're sure we're open to ideas. That's fine. I mean, it's coordinator, sub coordinator. You know, I mean, I can definitely, uh, you know, obviously get involved with people doing any illustrations or design, making sure that they're in line with the goal of the Venus. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think what you want to do is actually probably just to present your projects when you get an idea. Maybe uh, talk to Alfred how you can actually put it on the website or maybe just a forum so people actually contact you and then know where you're at and uh, what needs doing. So, yeah, that's pretty much what you would need to do, really. Yeah, really. And, you know, another question, too. I mean, I mean, obviously, we're we're activists. I mean, this is an activist arm, so or I guess the activist portion of the Venus Project. We really need to get the word out. And has there been any ideas about, like, flyers or pamphlets or just something like that so you know just something stupid where people see and they you know they get curious they go to the website they look it up and they see what's all because ultimately the most important thing is to actually get this word out so people understand you know what it's all about it's not a communism or socialism or anything that revolt you know has any state or government or anything it's just completely new uh, yeah, actually, I was going to come up with that, so I've, I've got an idea of a project that uh, we could uh, um, making. <coughs> I might as well talk about it now. Um, so, um, the Creative Heritage Fair, so we were thinking of uh, the project was um, making some uh, short animations of like uh, one, two minutes long on uh, um, FAQs on the Venus project. People basically to answer to all these misconceptions that people actually get uh, when hearing about the Venus project. So um, this uh, would be really easy to to spread, as, um, for example, on YouTube. And so it would be more of a computing. Uh, yeah, people would see that on the internet. Um, but for your idea uh, of flyers, um, I'm not actually too sure how that works out. Um, the, it's always good, as of course, to actually get um, to try all the media to actually spread the idea. And the good thing about the internet one is that actually people can just be at home and click on a link, and then they get a video with a flyer thing. Um, I suppose, yeah, it's just that I don't know actually. Um, what, I don't know if there's actually a team to who's got that um, looking after that. I don't know. Does anyone know about it? Take that as the no. Okay. Um, uh, where you could maybe look, uh, maybe look at the activism team, TVP activism um, website. Maybe it's got something on it. Or if uh, yeah, if you can't find anything, just maybe um, if you got an idea that just present it, and um, I'm, I'm sure you can get on with it if you've got like a. Good yeah, you know, I just, 
I'm just concerned because I think that, you know, we really need to start spreading this message, you know, to as many people as possible, utilizing whatever tools. You know, hopefully next week this meeting has twice as many people in it, and then that continues and continues. From yeah, whatever the most efficient way, whatever the most efficient way to get the word out and really spread this message is, is really what I'm trying to, to understand. What can we do that's the most efficient that will actually spread this word around so people can understand what it's all Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, the, the thing is like people will react differently to uh, different medias. Uh, some people a lot, uh, some people will be happy to just uh, see on the internet. Some people actually never go on the internet. Uh, obviously TV would be really hard to get something on TV. Um, if you want to the flyers that uh, you have to actually, uh, have to meet people in the street, uh, give hand them out yourself. Do your your own advertising. So um, if if you have means to do it, I don't see why not. You you can't do it. Um, I, I'm not the person who who actually probably to you should talk to about. But I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a good. That's, that's, it's always good to use as many medias as possible. Okay, cool. Um, I'll just finish with the, the agenda. Uh, teams intro pro, promo videos product for filmmakers. Videos promo introducing each teams. Uh, all video will be for the uh, by the following about mission, ability, and how to get involved. TVP why I forget campaign video about uh, why you advocate for the business project must be at least three minutes long or longer if you wish. Uh, open discussion, question comes up from the project. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's um, that's one of the um, projects that, uh, for the Creative Heritage Film. Um, I'm still a bit puzzled about this project. Um, so anyone, anyone who is interested in Creative Heritage Film will have, uh, we can um, talk about it, um, about that. Uh, see how we're going to do it because I'm trying to picture it and I've got problems to picture this project. Uh, but it's like um, Alfred was suggesting uh, basically uh, each other's interviewing, show an interview of each other, like and explaining why we're doing this. So, yeah, that, that, I see that working well. Uh, I just don't really see very well how we're going to do one for, for each team. Um, what, why we would need to, to do one for each team. Well, if you have different teams around the world, I mean, just as an idea, when it comes to interviewing people, I think the best people to interview are people who have been victims of the current system that we live in. There have been a lot of documentaries where people are interviewed and they show them getting kicked out of their house or, you know, you know they lose all their, their pension, things like that. Um, you know, obviously it's going on around the, the world actually and people around the world can do local interviews and they're able to pull it all together as part of some kind of film or something like that I think that would be very very helpful just an idea I don't know if that's what you meant by interviews but I think that showing the flaws of the system is going to help wake people up to a new hmm. um, well I'm not sure like, what I'm reading on the agenda I think uh, Alfred was um, Saying to make like an interview of the people actually working at the um, well on the, the actual business project team, and uh, actually say why they're actually working for for the Venus project. So, and that actually show that to people. Um, but about but what you're saying about um, making interviews and uh, all this, like to make people aware of. Uh, the problems in the world. I, I feel a bit like that's what the Zygast movement is doing, and the Venus Project is more about the solution. So um, I think like that's where the divergence is. Uh, I understand, but, but you know, in order to have, in order to have a solution, you have to show the problem first. I agree, but we also need to express that, uh, well, introduce people with the. Uh, resource-based economy, when, when, what could be better? Yeah, I mean, um, you, you would still need, like, uh, a reference when you want actually to, 
to show what why the Venus project is doing such thing is because we have this in our system. Um, but I, th I think probably just spend more time actually the solution than 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 the problem. That's my just just my opinion really. Yeah, my, my too. Hi, everybody. Um, you know, a lot of times to converse and to, to impart the solutions, it really the conversation is dictated by who you're talking to. And often they can relate to uh, the, the current problems. They're suffering from it in multiple ways. So often, who you're talking to will dictate, you know, the kind of references that you use to get them to see that there's a different solution, that there is a solution. Um, so often talking to people, you'll find out, you know, what they mean by things, what they mean by freedom or what they don't understand about uh, terms and blanket statements, where the scientific approach is a definite, it's a uh, reoccurring, provable, as opposed to almost everything they've been taught in the current system. So this, one of the suggestions I found is that is to lock your frame of reference with who you're talking to. Um, one other thing is that there's a whole bunch of uh, free banners and, and ready-to-use stuff on that link. You can also print up a bunch of those. Uh, there are some vertical banners that can be printed and left in libraries. Those have been real popular too. But I was just going to interject that sometimes the person you're talking to will dictate how you can um, converse with them and get them aware of a new solution. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, different people, you have to talk differently to different people depending on their values anyway. Uh, so you always have to um, get different approach. Um, and it's always good to talk to different type of people to actually, uh, I personally find it interesting to actually talk to people who would actually um, uh, would know, I know they're against it and they're coming from different background or they have different ideas and actually uh, they would tell you different things about it. Uh, you, you always see anyway the, the same misconceptions about the about the project, which is always um, uh, takes a long. Uh, so it's, it's never easy to actually just uh, convince them because they're so attached to their own opinion, unfortunately. Absolutely. And Jock's made it pretty clear it's difficult to talk to somebody for 20 minutes and expect to change their values if you can connect on something that piques their interest or helps them to become involved to look for themselves to go a little bit deeper. But it's really difficult to just talk to somebody for a few minutes and expect to change their values. Yeah, definitely. Which actually... Um brings me to the project I wanted to uh, talk to everyone about. Um, so it concerns the creative, creative heritage film, but um, I think other people from different teams can actually join up. Uh, unfortunately, the other coordinators are not here, so I can't really see if they would actually be happy to help uh, or see how they could help. But basically, my, the idea was uh, for us um, to do some uh, little animations, uh, so which would be about the frequently asked questions. Uh, people that just always come up with the same uh, assumptions or questions about the project. And having what's really good about an animation is that you get uh, the audio and the visual and s uh, animation usually talk a lot to people. So I thought that was a, be a really good media. And also, um, you know, like Jack does in his uh, videos or lectures, he, if he wants to prove a point sometimes, he actually draws uh, to explain his points and at the same time, as just uh, you know, giving an explanation. Uh, just so people actually see what I mean by little animation, I've got, actually got an example which uh, sort of gave me, uh, I inspired myself from, and I'll just send you the link.
So yeah, that. So yeah, that link is uh, just a link to a little animation I found on the internet. It's just a uh, ten episodes of one minute, and it's just very well uh, to me. I feel like it, it explains really well uh, their point, um, and it's quite fun to watch. So I think it's a good way of getting people's attention. So yeah, I, I suppose we could all take a minute to have a look at it and maybe hear some feedback. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, I thought uh, I was still thinking about that. I'll just um, I'll carry on with my project. That's uh, later. That's fine. Uh, Ray, do you want to um, talk about your projects? Sure. Thought you'd never ask. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. What I've got to present to you is actually very, very simple, but it is a, uh, what you might call a long-term or a long-range project. Um, one that is of obvious need, but I, I don't know if anybody here has actually given it any consideration yet. The linguistic team, uh, quite obviously, uh, take all the materials and we translate them into a wide variety of languages. We're currently supporting, uh, I believe it's 83 non-English languages at the moment. Um, that support, though, I do need to, to uh, qualify that. Uh, some of those languages are, you know, very, very um, veteran teams, if you will. They've, you know, they've been in teams. They have their own coordinator, or in some cases, multiple coordinators, depending on the size of the team. Um, that have been at this for quite a while. These these guys, you might as well call them professionals at this point. You know, going right along with what Jacques says about credentials, they might not have any, uh, you know, papers certifying them as translators. But I think a lot of these people know more about translating than some people who've been in the business for 20 years now. And of course, we we've, we've been able to do a lot of that um, simply by having this be such an open, collaborative. Uh, transparent effort. You know, everybody's input is important, and uh, we share uh, as much experience as we possibly can across all the language teams. So, uh, but then we also have some languages that we support. Why? Well, I, I guess I should uh, I should define the term support. The moment somebody comes in and says, "Hey, I'd like to translate into you know, whatever you know, um, Greek," uh, if that's not a language that we already have. We immediately install it, and now we support it. You know, as soon as someone asks for it, we support it. Um, taking that into consideration, we do have some languages where there's only one person, you know, who's doing anything within that language. So keep that in mind. 83 might mislead you a little bit if you just take it on face value. All right, having said all of that, uh, we roughly have something like 50 very, very active teams, or uh, uh, let's say active to very active teams. And we're producing an awful lot of translations. And some of these are videos that you know, are, are part of the uh, Venus Project book, if you will. When we're finished with these, of course, there's no such thing as finished because new languages are coming in all the time. But uh, when we get to a point where especially the larger ones are uh, they're completed in English, and we have, I don't know, let's say seven completed translations, fully proofread, ready to go. We're going to be converting these into torrent files and making them available in a wide variety of locations. We're going to be advertising these things like crazy. Um, we're in the midst of putting on what, what I'm calling the linguistic team's public face. Uh, and we're going to point this face not at the community, not back at TVP or TZM or any other entity, but out to the world. Um, multiple YouTube uh, channels, one for every team. Multiple Facebook channels, one for every team. Getting these things up in places where, um, you know, all of the different torrent uh, distribution networks. 
uh, and that's just for, for videos. With PDFs, we've got, um, we've got access to a, a huge database. It's a PDF database, and the database itself goes through and indexes all of the information contained within every PDF that's uploaded there and makes that information part of a search engine that's available to research labs and universities all across the world. These are the kinds of things that we're going after to spread awareness. Along with these efforts of spreading the actual translations that we're creating, we want covers to go along with them, especially when it comes to, like, say, DVD torrents. Uh, we're going to be producing ISO files that have all of the subtitles already built into them. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. As we uh, continue on into the future, we're going to be um, also getting more and more into overdubbing, where you know these DVD ISOs are going to have, uh, you know, the vocal tracks are going to be in the given language. They won't even need subtitles unless there are signs in the video or you know, uh, uh, you know some kind of like panels in the background with information on them. Then we'll we'll use that the subtitles for those. Um, but we're talking about an awful lot of materials that. Uh, are going to be going out in this uh, fashion. We're right at the very beginning of the need for this, but um, for all of these things, like let, let's say, for example, Future by Design, we get this completed, we're going to need cover art for this. You know, um, if, if TVP already has a cover that is, um, you know, that they've designed, well, then we want to recreate that cover, but do it in a way where the text itself can be peeled off and replaced with uh, translations of that text, and then include those also in these torrent files. And um, that's not something that we're set up to do. Uh, you know, our, our folks, we, we focus on, the, on, on words and clarity and grammar and syntax and punctuation and all that good stuff. Um, we don't want to start a separate you know, media expressions group just to take care of this when, you know, you guys already exist. Uh, so what I would love to do is to create a kind of bridge between our two uh, project teams and, um, you know, work towards, you know, making some very, very high quality cover art for uh, DVD cases, DVD, uh, now by cases I mean the bigger cases, you know, um, like if you go to a store and buy a DVD, the big case that it's in, uh, and then also for the sizes for, for regular gem cases that people buy when they burn their own CDs or, or DVDs, um, as well as perhaps um, the labels themselves that you stick onto the DVDs. Um, there are also some other considerations that I want to throw in, but, but I just want, I'm going to stop there and j just let you kind of digest, you know, at least this part of it. Fantastic work. Ray, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Appreciate that. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, sounds like a very valuable project, and uh, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to help out with that. Um, that's another project we can include in our list. Uh, and it, um, I think about as soon as you want to get things going, I think you could just come and contact us. Um, just uh, wanted to just say, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll come back to you on that because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Hate it. Don't hate it. Learn from it. <laughs> so if we have some kind of target, you know, say like, hey, you know, in three months it looks like this is going to be released. If we get a heads up on the title and what kind of slant, what kind of an approach, if it's to the public or a university or, or you know, a specific targeted approach, we could all begin on that because it takes the time to assimilate it and then to have it approved. Um, yeah, so, yeah, actually, I think I found what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got quite a good range of uh, skills, anyway, to help you with this uh, sort of editing. Um, this, I mean, this is all like really... Uh, basically, uh, what I was thinking is uh, everything that's digital, it's, it would be easy for us to just anyway uh, transfer it to you. Just, uh, I mean, personally, yeah, I've, I've got access to to the equipment to do this sort of work. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that do have as well. Okay, ideally, what we would want to do, um, uh, considering, you know, um, 
if, if you've ever purchased anything at all from the Venus Project store, you'll know that it's, it comes already wrapped with these kinds of covers and titles and labels and whatnot. What we would need, or what you would need, I should say, is to uh, talk directly with Roxanne about getting the raw um, files that she uses to print these off. You know, you, you, I mean, you guys are aware that they have to print all of their own stuff. They do their own burning and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just too expensive to, to go outside uh, of being in-house. So she has, or should have, um, most of the materials that you would need for this, and the originals, of course, uh, which would be the, you know, perfect for, for working with. You don't want to take you know, a, uh, an already produced one and then try to somehow rip it apart yourself you know, when the, the raw materials are available to us. So if you could get them in uh, their raw form, then you could put together, like, basically templates. You know, so each item would, would have its own template. And, and by item, I mean, you know, we've got Future by Design, we've got the Larry King interview, we've got, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is not something that you would need to wait for me to say, okay, we're ready for it. Because um, if you think about how something like the linguistic team works, there are teams that are currently working on Larry King interview, for instance. But there's other teams that are finished with that, and they're working on Future by Design. Uh, meanwhile, um, when the team that finishes Larry King is, or when a team that's working on Larry King is done, they may switch over to something completely different and not get to Future by Design for months. Um, so the idea here is that we, we actually need this, this stuff in advance. Um, the moment that we're ready to create a torrent out of something, I want to just be able to go into the, whatever we call it, you know, let's, let's call it the, uh, the covers catalog or some, something you know, silly like that. I, be, I need to be able to go into the catalog, grab the files, throw them into the torrent, and, and push it out to all of the torrent sites um, without having to come to you guys and say, okay, we're just about ready. I don't know exactly when. You know, we would be bumping all, all into each other if we tried to, tried to do it that way. Um, the actual work involved in creating these things, um, although I don't have the time to even consider being a part of it, um, I know it wouldn't take that long if you started with the raw files. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, setting it up uh, as, um, well, you need, to, you need to have it in layered images so that we can go in, pry the English text layer off and lay right on top of it the Hungarian text or you know, whatever languages it would ha happen to be. Um, what I would need to be able to do is basically come to you and say, okay, we're, we're putting this torrent together for this particular item. Uh, the languages are going to be, you know, these 12. You know, here, here are the files for those actual translations, and either you guys can, can make the substitution, you know, open up Photoshop or whatever it is that you're using, put it in Hungarian, and then, you know, produce hard copies of those images, or um, no, no, we do not touch Google Translation. Uh, uh, Google Translate is like the Antichrist to us. It's the devil. Uh, we do everything by hand with loving care, human only. <laughs> only humans are allowed to touch the stuff that goes through the linguistic team. And I'm sorry if that sounded a little bit harsh, but uh, Google Translate is just not ready for prime time yet. Anyway, um, we want to make sure, you know, we put things through very, very strong proofreading. And that's something that Google Translate does not have. Um, and it does not understand contextual information at all. So everything that we do goes through humans or it doesn't happen. Um, I don't know, do you guys have any questions for me about any of this? Well, some of the titles have been discontinued, like Conversations with Jock. Uh, they're going to make that available online. But if is there like a master list of the titles that are being worked on that would give us an idea? I know that you know Future by Design. Is great that they're going to do the interview. Um, do you guys have a master list? Not something to present to you right now. Um, I can give you the master list of all of the items that are currently within the linguistic team, but now you're going to have to be um, basically swimming around between stuff that is TVP, stuff that is TZM, and stuff that is neither. Because uh, we also support a couple of offline, uh, not offline, but uh, external projects, if you will. Um, one of them, for instance, is uh, a 
a documentary called Psy War, and it's about how the advertising industry uh, basically controls us through advertising and whatnot, um, and gives, a, gives some history on that. And then we've got things like the Trom documentary that's uh, currently being worked on, although that's not an official linguistic team uh, project. It's still something that, you know, we're supporting. Um, so you'd have to swim through all of that stuff if, if I were to give you that. Uh, but in the meantime, if this is something that interests you, then of course I can put something together for that. Yeah, right on. Is the book uh, Best That Money Can't Buy, is that going to be into, into a video form? I don't know about video form, um, but what we're going to be doing with that very, very soon, in fact, is uh, we're going, I'm, I'm going to create a second instance of Poodle. This is going to be a very, very private <laughs> instance of Poodle. It's not going to be you know, transparent and wide open like our, our normal uh, install of Poodle. And we're going to use this for items that are only available in TVP's store. Uh, get this stuff uh, translated, which uh, that that makes it sound like it's going to be done in a week. It's not. You know, don't don't uh, don't delude yourself. Uh, these things take a long time, and that's a very very large book. Um, but we're going to we're basically going to treat uh, the best that money can't buy similar to the way we treated um, Zeitgeist moving forward. And if you remember when we went through that translation marathon, it was you know. Um, you know, people signing forms saying that, you know, they promise not to share this information outside of the group uh, while we get it translated. And once it's translated, I'm going to be giving these translations right back to Roxanne so that she can then also make them available in the store in different languages. Uh, it's not something that we're then going to turn around and pump out into the, the public. So, um, that is, I mean, that still is going to require some additional thought to set up the, the whole entire system so that it works in that way. Um, we don't want this leaking, even though, yeah, of course, everybody knows that you could probably find a PDF of it available online. Um, we're not going to support that. We're not going to make that any worse than it already is. And again, you know, you've got the cover of The Best That Money Can't Buy, and we're going to need that um, able to be translated so that the, you know, the, the words can be peeled off of it and a translation of the, you know, the synopsis or whatever, whatever else might be available uh, front and back cover um, would be able to be translated and superimposed. So uh, this is, in a sense, a rather big project. As I did mention, it's a long-term project because we're not going to stop translating and new, new uh, titles are coming up all the time. Um, but the actual work involved should not be very difficult for a group of, I don't know, say two or three, you know, dedicated people. Uh, if it's more of a, if it's taken as more of a side project where, okay, well, something's come up for the link team, let's then jump over to that, and you guys have to change gears, then, okay, well, maybe it would be a, a larger group, and you'd still be able to, you know, run, run right through it. Uh, the only thing is, keep in mind that we're trying to be as, uh, we're trying to make these presentations as absolutely professional looking as possible. Um, you know, this is not a grassroots movement, if you will. Uh, not when we're talking TVP. Uh, they are very, very established, and we have to be able to present um, a professional, uh, you know, uh, non-profit look, as, as it were. So, um, the actual thinking involved within your group on how to approach these things is going to, you, know, you, you guys are going to need to have some conferences trying to figure out the best approach for, for each uh, type of situation that we face. Some of them will be DVDs, some of them will be you know, PDFs. Some of them we're looking, like I said, with uh, the best that money can't buy, we're looking to give that right back to Roxanne so she can actually have it printed in you know these various languages and that's going to be actual books and actual book covers <laughs> so you know you're not talking about just an image that we slap inside of a file so you know give all that some thought and um, I'm sure that there's going to need to be more discussion on it I've got more that I could bring up here but um, in the interest of um, not telling you what to do, which I never ever want to do. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys work out the details yourselves. So, you know, as you come up with questions, concerns, queries, inquisitors, anything, don't please don't hesitate to uh, you know, tug my shirt tail and get my attention. Whatever it is you need to do, and uh, we'll go over all that. 
Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds great. I mean, and this that uh, another project that we can work on. Um, at the moment, though, I don't know how big our team is. I know every, not everyone is in here today, um, and it's only well, basically, it's the first time I actually speak to everyone. So we are, uh, don't actually know each other very well yet. Um, right. right. Yeah, so it's just, uh, I think we, we just need a little bit of time to actually organize ourselves um, and maybe actually uh, get someone on the case uh, to actually organize that side and, um, and to get everybody together to actually work on that. Okay, um, on that note, I'd like to share with you some coordinator experience. Um, I don't know yet who the coordinators are for you know who's who's handling what. I know I do know that there was some talk in here about you know we need a coordinator for this and so and so is the coordinator for that. Um, of course, I don't have um, the connection to all of this to know what half of the teams are that you're looking to create. <laughs> But you know, all of that aside, uh, when it comes to coordination, at least my experience within the various roles that I fill you know, across the community, my experience has shown me that you will attract more people to um, a project group if you actually have projects that you're promoting within that group. Um, if it's just to join a group and get something started, a lot of people don't want to be in the very beginning of it because that's where all the real hard work is. And you guys know that because you're going through it right now. Um, this will get so much easier for you, I promise, as long as you never, never, never give up. <laughs> Just keep on, you know, keep on forging ahead, and you will find a lot of people coming into the group, and some of them will realize, oh, this really isn't what I want to do, and they'll just leave. They won't leave you a message saying they're leaving. They will just stop coming around. You won't hear from them anymore. But you'll also get people who come in and will basically feel like they have found paradise. This is what I've been looking for, and they will stick around and they will do great things with you. Be patient. Be gentle. Um, don't uh, don't allow frustration or other emotional baggage to wear you down. It's all a part of the game. Um, you know, like uh, like Bill Hicks says, it, uh, it's just a ride. <laughs> you know, treat the, the the group like that too. You know, uh, keep focusing on the actual organization and the structure and the oh, especially the communication with it with everyone. Make sure communication is you know, one of the easiest aspects within the group to, um, you know, for anybody. And think in terms of what communication is needed by veterans, by people who are really kind of just getting started, and by people who are even looking for the group, you know, who don't even know um, that the group exists and they're, they want to get involved somehow in the multimedia aspects. Make it easy on everyone and then just keep your own focus on moving the team ahead. That, uh, I really, really wish somebody had given me that advice back you know, two years ago when I started the Link Team yeah, because it was a very, very frustrating experience. Looking back, I can say those were the good old days. <laughs> and, uh, but, but when I was going through it, this is horrible. <laughs> so you'll probably have a similar experience, but you know, like I said, try not to allow the emotions to rule uh, your actions. Um, uh, also, this project that I am suggesting to you does not have any kind of um, priority on it. It's not a rush thing. It's, um, in fact, don't even introduce it or any other project until you've got some kind of a structure that um, that the team is comfortable working within. You know, set up that communication system first because that's everything. Uh, and then go looking for your people for you know filling the various roles. Decide on the roles that you need to fill and go looking for those folks um, gently or or um, you know not loudly. Um, bring up some of the projects that you're looking forward to. You know, uh, the Living Team one you know, could be one of those. Of course, you've got other ones, um, but uh, get the system in place and then start expanding out from there. If you try to expand too fast, you're only going to dilute the team and direction will be difficult for people to understand. You know, what am I supposed to be doing again? 
you don't want anybody really thinking along those terms. So, you know, define what the team is, define the, the various roles within it, uh, define how they all connect, make sure that the communication is in place, and then turn your focus to the various projects and building groups to focus on those projects. Um, that is probably the, uh, the nutshell of the best advice I can, I can offer you guys at this point. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it perfectly makes sense. Um, at the moment, we are very um, new to each other. We haven't actually worked, I mean, personally, haven't worked with anyone else on anything. Uh, so we, the, the actual little products that we have, they actually should be pretty good at actually uh, getting to know each other and uh, see if, uh, how, test our organization. And so we can actually uh, bring on bigger projects like yours, I suppose. Yeah, and the way you just worded that, um, one last thing to add, start with small projects. <laughs> Do yourself a favor, start with small ones and see what kind of challenges they present to the group. Um, you're probably going to want to um, migrate towards uh, programs that you can install on a server. I don't know if you guys have access to a server yet, but if you've got a website, you do. Um, but if you can, if the server is set up so that you can install programs like, you know, the linguistic team, we installed Poodle, you know, those kinds of things. If you have that kind of um, ability, you might want to start uh, almost from the, from the beginning looking for programs, open source programs that you can install and allow everybody to contribute in at the same time, you know, collaborative tools, as opposed to people working on their own installation of Photoshop and then, you know, you have to wait until Bill's done so that he can then send his results over to Sally so she can do her thing so that she can then send it over to Frank. And, you know, that is going to really cause your projects um, serious delays. But if you can find online tools that do the things that you need done, uh, you can very, very quickly, you know, while Sally's working on it, Joe can also have pulled those same files and be working on his aspect. And when they're done, they can be combined right there online. You're going to find things like that really help to speed things up. So um, even if it's just a small focus group within the overall media, uh, the Venus uh, Expressions, uh, what is it, Venus Expressions Media, or have you guys shortened it to just Venus Expressions? Yeah, that's it, Venus Expression Media. Okay. Um, even if it's just a small focus group within the, the larger group that focuses on looking for and testing out online products that you can you know, install uh, on your own server, um, it's, I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, you don't want everybody looking because then you're not getting anything else done. So, um, so that's another piece of advice I can pass to you. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, the organization is key in this sort of project, especially when we're very far away. We need somewhere that we can actually all meet up on the web and actually share all our uh, information and uh, make available the latest updates on, on every aspect of the project so everybody knows what's going on and what, uh, at this time, basically. Oh, another something I wanted to ask. Uh, I don't know if you, I was wondering what the TVP was doing about um, the material that they've got, like audio, um, le um, Jack Fresco's lectures, like audio, the 74 to 1980, and all the videos that he's got that they're actually selling on their website. I'm, I'm wondering why are they not actually going digital and uh, actually making it downloadable from their website, which might actually even save money probably with all the postage and uh, all the format that you have to actually um, make it on. You know, Roxanne and I have uh, discussed that and it's something that she's looking into now. Um, with what they have to figure out though, they're, I don't know if it's still an issue, but they had a problem with the way that their um, shopping cart worked within the online store. Uh, and it was causing all kinds of problems. And um, because of that, uh, she was holding off on making any kind of changes to anything within the store uh, until we got that solved. Um, well, I'm saying we. I was not a part of the actual solution team. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's been solved or not. If it has been solved, then it's, uh, it's on the to-do list. That is definitely something that we're looking to do. Great. And um, that also includes a, an official, you know, I, I hate that word, but I, I don't have a better one, um, an official PDF version of the best that money can't buy, uh, which will make things so much easier. Um, you know, of course, it's in line with uh, the Venus Project tenets because books equal trees right now until we actually have the means to manufacture paper out of you know some kind of synthetic material we still need trees for that and that kind of goes against what we're about here so um, it makes sense it very very much makes sense to take advantage of the digital age and um, convert these things into downloadable uh, formats <coughs> but um, uh, the same, the same as everything else. Um, one thing that you'll find, especially as a focused group, um, is things that you think should only take, you know, a week to put into play. Sometimes take six months. Um, again, that goes back to what I was saying about patience. Be patient. Be gentle. Um, especially be gentle. Be gentle with others. Be gentle with yourself. Um, the be gentle with yourself is something that a lot of people forget to do. Um, don't be too harsh on yourself. You're going to make mistakes, I promise. I'm, I'm, I've been at this for two years, and in this kind of a community, that's, that's like a, I'm, I'm like the old man around here. <laughs> but, you know, even after two years of, of doing this every day for close to 16 hours every day, um, I'm, I guarantee you, I've got plenty of mistakes left in me to make. <laughs> I'm going to be making plenty of mistakes, I guarantee it. Uh, no, none of us are immune to it. Be gentle on yourself when you make a mistake. Be gentle on the people in your teams when they make mistakes. Be gentle with people outside of your teams especially. Don't, don't get caught up in the hive mind, the us versus them or any, any of that kind of stuff. Everybody is important. Everybody contributes. Um, everybody's got something to contribute. One of the things that I really, really try to push in, with the linguistic teams uh, meetings, which we have every two weeks, is um, it doesn't matter if you're here 16 hours a day with no time off, you know, weekends included, versus whether you work your ass off all month long just so that you can devote two hours to helping to translate something. I, I, it doesn't matter how much time you're devoting. is If you're giving, then that's what matters, and we're all of equal importance. It doesn't matter what role we happen to be in. It's just a role. It's just a ride. It's just a game. You know, we every role needs to be filled. Somebody's got to fill them. You know, if the if the person if there is a person who is filling it, awesome. If there's not, you got a problem. So, um, but don't hold things against people. Don't hold grudges. Don't have a short memory when it comes to mistakes. This is really really important. Instead, when a mistake happens. Try to work out why it happened, what allowed it to happen, what can be put into place to prevent it from happening in the future. You know, how can we redesign that part of the system so that it can't happen? That would be the ultimate. And that's exactly what we've done within the linguistic team. Um, the system that we're running right now is really no different from the system we started with, except that we've plugged up a hell of a lot of the holes that were in that original blueprint. You know, and if you can focus on things that way and treat each other like, you know, the, um, with, with, you know, that sense of oneness and, you know, I don't succeed unless you succeed, so let me help you. Um, and, you know, if I can help you to succeed, then it helps everybody. You know, if you can have that kind of an outlook when you're doing all of this, this group is going to shine bright. If you turn your back on that, and you know you 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 know, get angry with people when something doesn't go right. This group is really not going to go anywhere, and that that can be said for any group. So, hopefully, some of that helps you as well. Great. Yep, that sounds uh, awesome. Um. Um. So yeah, I mean, uh, we'll we'll see uh, how the beginning of our teams go, uh, and then uh, um, your anyway your project here will be taken in account, and we'll keep in touch uh, on the latest uh, uh, about that.
Uh, I don't know how much time people have left because it's actually been going on for an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. Uh, so shall we end the meeting or now? Because I've got actually just one last thing to just talk about. We're with you, man. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to finish up uh, with a project I was telling you about because uh, I thought I um, just wanted to finish um, explaining it. Basically, I did actually contact a um, screenwriter for TVP movie. Actually, um, the latest I know about that is um, they don't actually have a professional yet one yet. They don't have the money for it. Um, but they sh they are, once they get the money, uh, they will get one. Well, that's what I understood, and that was the latest. Uh, yeah, so just uh, for just to finish up with, with the project I was uh, talking about, I contacted um, um, Julita, which is uh, Andrew's girlfriend. She was she uh, can't remember what coordinator. She's the coordinator of what. Uh, but anyway, I presented the project, and uh, she talked to Roxanne about it. Roxanne actually really liked uh, the idea. And she's happy for us to go with it and see how it goes. Obviously, we would need um, to present it to them to see um, if uh, everything we're talking about in these little animations uh, is right and it's not erroneous. So, um, just to to sh tell you what I was thinking about um, the the subjects, I thought like uh, we needed maybe to. Um, we, we need to pick some topics. Uh, basically, I thought that we could start with like three episodes of like two minutes, one, two minutes, to see how everything goes. So my topics were utopia, Marxism, religious, religion, incentive, and productivity. Basically, these are the five things that keep coming back at me whenever I talk about the Venus Project. Um, so I maybe I could talk about it later, but just uh, maybe if people who are actually interested uh, uh, about this project now, if um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to um, think about it and uh, choose the topics we're going to talk about and sort of write the script for it and um, work on that and then present it to um, probably Roxanne and see if she agrees that or she's got any modifications to make on it and just uh, yeah get cracking with the project and what kind of uh, animation were you thinking about what i saw oh, the um cartoon kind of animation um is it, what kind of animation were you thinking on trying to create yeah the cartoon uh, example that i sent is basically that that's what I was thinking about. The reason why is because um, it is um, it's easier to to do something in two D, like to share when, especially when people are actually far apart, to share this this type of um, of work. And um, but I mean, three D would still be a possibility. We'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, it just, just this, the, that video that I sent you. It's uh, what I like about it. It's like it's very quick, straight to the point, and people understand very well by listening and um, watching it. So that's the aim of basically this little animation to answer questions quickly and very well. Out of sight. No, I think it's a great concept. Um, so two minutes, and it's sure easy to manipulate and have transitions from vector objects, squares and circles, even have them go into a tree, but making a little human or making a, a kind of a person and having them change over, that's uh, some difficult, I can't do that, but I can do some animation in regards to, I mean, you know, dollar symbols and houses and humans, you know, stick people to a certain degree. We want to achieve a, a high level of quality. Everyone knows that. I'm just wondering how how we could do that. Um, well, 
first, I mean, once we get actually the script, uh, we basically we will talk about it and uh, see, work on it and uh, see, get the storytelling right. Uh, also, actually, I don't know if there are any here, but I saw that in our the Creative Heritage film team, there are some actors. Um, so I would actually, they could be helpful here by uh, doing the voices. So I don't, is anyone here an actor? Actually, yeah, I was an actor for quite some Yeah, cool. So, yeah, if, for example, if you're interested in helping out um, uh, once we get a clearer idea, uh, what, what I was thinking is basically is, uh, just getting a an, narrator, an not actually um, a hero or a character, because uh, the subject would change all the time. Uh, I don't think we would need actually a, a recurrent character. Sure. And that's, that's understandable. I, I do have uh, narration uh, experience. Well, and it's a comic relief kind of cartoon that was illustrated with the link. And everyone likes that. Um, so you have five. So I guess the thing now would be to kind of to find out a short topic that represents the Venus Project in some way, the, the most sought after questions. Is that right? Uh, well, basically, it's, it would be to. I've just posted uh, the link to the to the FAQ page of the Munis project. Uh, there are 105 uh, questions, so we we wouldn't be able to make a one animation on each. So the 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 point, well, the objective here is to actually uh, try to take the same questions and use merge all the. Um, Similar questions and then merge the answers together, um, so we could we could talk about one topic. Uh, the topic I gave earlier was just like an example. Uh, I felt were the most recurrent ones. Outside. Okay. Um, well, that, that's that's it about uh, the project I wanted to talk about. Um, so uh, maybe we could just um, finish up, and uh, um, uh, I will probably post something on the forum to carry on talking about this project. And uh, we'll keep in touch with you, Ray. Thanks for coming and uh, for your input. And I'm sure we'll keep in touch and let each other know how everything is going. Okay, you're ready. All right. All right. I'm going to take off myself. Uh, like, like I said earlier, if anybody has any questions or anything, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, good luck and uh, uh, great life to the entire team. Indeed. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Same to you. All right, Ray. Thank you. Yeah, for, so for the people interested uh, with the projects we talked about, just to speak to you, the coordinator of each team. Uh, if there isn't one, you're all welcome to um, be one um, be one of the coordinators if you if you got enough time and you feel like you could help out. Uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, just let's just keep in touch, and uh, I'll, I'm sure we'll reschedule our meeting. Maybe in a month time, um, month time maybe, Alfred, what do you think? Ah, okay, two weeks. <laughs>